Hey, what's up guys? So in part three of our March algorithm video, we're gonna be talking about circulation and head injury. So we've already put a tourniquet on to address massive bleeding. We've secured the airway with an adjunct. We've got respirations addressed with an occlusive dressing or an NCD. Circulation. This is where I'm gonna establish an IV. So I'm gonna get preferably an 18 gauge or I'm gonna get an IO. I'm gonna administer those fluids to keep the systolic blood pressure above 90 or maintaining a radial pulse. I'm gonna give medications as appropriate as so your ketamine, your fentanyl, giving those pain management protocols. Head injury hypothermia. So head injury just maintains, you're gonna make sure that you're maintaining a cerebral perfusion pressure or make sure you have a radial pulse. So I mean, once the brain starts to get ischemic, you're just potentiating those effects. Hypothermia, keep it warm. If you expose them, cover them back up, put a blanket on them. If you have the little HPMA, HPMK kit, so put that on there with the little heating pads, but never skin to skin for the heating pads. Always put like a blanket over them. Maintain that blood pressure, keep it warm. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, if you guys have any questions on the March algorithm, we're gonna do a little hands-on assessment for this guy, show you guys what to do. But yeah, if you have any questions on rapid trauma assessments, the March algorithm, feel free to send me a message. All right, guys, so we're back to our sterile patient here. So we have already occluded all of the massive bleeding with the tourniquet. We've secured his airway with an adjunct. We've assessed his respirations. We've plugged any holes. We've released any pressure. Now we're into our circulation. So once again, I'm just gonna do a quick little blood sweep going down, going down, making sure there's no bleeds, assessing any of those bleeds that I find, getting a large bore IV or an IO, flowing those IV fluids in there. If you're using just normal saline, be careful. It does have a pH of 5.0 plus or minus. So you don't wanna overload with normal saline and causing an acidotic shift because you're putting a, you know, an acid pH inside of his body or a low pH inside his body. Now that I've got his blood pressure up, he starts to get a little bit more conscious, so I'll give him those pain meds, give him that ketamine, give him that fentanyl, a little bit of push of either one, depending on what your protocols are. Head injury, if he starts to come around again, and he's, you know, I'm gonna reassess his, his APU, see if he's A and O times three times two, I get a little bit of mentation thing. I try and do that before I give him pain meds. I wanna get a neurological assessment, because I mean, you give him 50 milligrams of fentanyl, or 50 micrograms of fentanyl, or 50 milligrams of ketamine, it's gonna be a little wonky afterwards. After all that, I'm going to cover him back up. Hey buddy, get a blanket, make sure he's all warm, saucy. Now one thing that I do really wanna talk about is, the March algorithm is always gonna be fluid. So let's say I get past respirations, and I'm working on circulation, I got an IV, and then he starts having you know, respiratory distress again. Do I need to go back to H to finish the algorithm? No, I'll just come back up. Hey man, you having trouble breathing? Yeah, okay, so now I'm gonna do an NCD. If I get lost or I'm having that stress kind of tunnel vision, I just start over. So doing back to my RTA, hey, do I have any massive bleeding? No, check my tourniquet, put it on, go back to airway. Hey buddy, can you hear me? Is it patent, is it clear? Assessing, teeth and attack, no blood, no mucus. The rhinorrhea and the orrhea, or otorrhea. Going down, hey, you breathe in, cool. Going back to the RTA. Like there, there's gonna be a lot of times where you're gonna be stressed out, especially like in those stress inoculation training things, or you know, you got RD Sims going around, there's a dude yelling in your face, you're spraying blood at you and things like that. So make sure that if you do blank out, just start over. It happens to the best of us. If you guys have any questions, like I said, shoot me a message and uh, we'll try and do some more videos like this so you guys get kind of a capture. I'm not saying this is what right looks like by any means, but it's just a way. So it's a way to expose, kind of learn some new techniques. And if you guys have any other techniques that you use, feel free to like post them. That way we can kind of combine our knowledge base and make everybody a little bit better. I appreciate you guys.